boys and girls, good morning. I have to say I miss you not being in this classroom, but for right now, this is what we have to do. So I hope you'll enjoy what I've got planned for this morning. Now, before we do anything, we're gonna pray. I'm gonna pick two of the sticks out of the prayer pail, like we do every Sunday. I'm picking out the lost, and I'm also picking out the one that says our church. All right, because we always pray for the lost. Why do we pray for the lost? Because they need Jesus. And we're gonna pray for our church today because of the situation that we're in where we can't meet together right now. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Nobody's looking around. This is between you and God, and we're gonna pray for the church first, okay? So let's bow our heads. Jesus, we just bring the assembly at Augusta to you today, Father. We just ask you to, to touch each family in a special way. Lord, it's hard not meeting together here on this Sunday morning. But Lord, I pray that you will touch each person in their homes, Lord. Give each family peace. And, and Lord, I just pray that you would love on them even though they're not here. And Jesus, we also pray for the lost. We know the lost represents those that are not saved. And Lord, we're asking you to bring the lost in and help us to be witnesses for you and help us to be able to tell people about you, Lord, that they will come to know you as, as their Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we'll put the lost back in that one. We'll put the church in that one. All right, so I want to ask some review questions on Moses. You know, the last lesson we had was on Moses going up on the mountain and all this stuff happened. So I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to ask some questions. So you need to have a piece of paper and a pencil and you need to listen closely because what we're going to do is when you answer these questions, when I'm done, I want your mom or your dad to put these on our Facebook page, uh, the Assembly Kids group page, and whoever puts it first, with the time that you're putting it on there, will win a prize from Miss Lydia. How about that? So, get your pencils and your papers ready. We are going to listen to these questions, and most of you know these things. This is easy stuff. All right, I'm going to read them slow. Number one. God called Moses to come back up the mountain. Who did he take with him? A, George. B, Mike. C, Joshua. All right, I'm gonna repeat those. A, George. B, Mike. C, Joshua. All right, number two. Who did Moses leave in charge of the camp? A, Miss Lydia. B, Aaron. C, Lester. That's A, Miss Lydia. B, Aaron. C, Lester. Now, you know Miss Lydia would love to be in charge of the camp. Number three. Did Moses come back to the camp in a few days? This is a yes or no answer. Did Moses come back to the camp in a few days? Number four. How long was Moses on the mountain? A, 100 days and nights, B, three days and nights, or C, 40 days and nights. That's A, 100 days and nights, B, three days and nights, or C, 40 days and nights. Number five, what did the people continue to do? This is something they always did when they didn't get their way. All right, you know that answer. Number six, they finally went to Aaron and insisted that he make them something. What was it? A, make them an idol that would be their God. B, make them popcorn. C, drive them to see their mama. That's A, make an idol that would be their God. B, make them popcorn. And C, drive them to see their mama. All right, number seven. Did Aaron take a stand for God? This is yes or no question. Did Aaron take a stand for God? Number eight. What did Aaron tell the people to bring to him? A, hamburger. Letter B, all their jewelry. C, a pizza. Pepperoni pizza. All right, that's A, a hamburger. B, 
B, all their jewelry. C, a pepperoni pizza. Number nine, he put the jewelry in a pot over the fire and melted it down. When it's cooled, what did he do? And that is an answer you're gonna write down. What did he do with his hands when the gold cooled? Number 10, when the people saw the golden calf, what did they begin to do? And that you're gonna write down also. Let me ask that question again. When the people saw the golden calf, what did they begin to do? Okay, so that's 10 questions and 10 answers. Now, you want your mama or your daddy to post it on the Assembly Kids group page on Facebook. Whoever posts first will get a prize from Miss Lydia. All right, now, I think Dr. Stanley is in the house and she has an object lesson for you. So we'll be right back. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Stanley here and I have a great object lesson for you. And it's all about fear. Everybody say fear. And so we're gonna talk about fear and what to do about it. So today, this candle represents you and me. Everybody say you and me. All right, so. How many of you have ever been afraid? I've been afraid of things before. And so I have here something called a fear fan. And you say, well, what is a fear fan? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I'm gonna show you. We're gonna make a fan. Remember how to make the fan where you take the paper and you go back and forth, just like this, and you make a cool little fan. And then when you're hot, you can fan with it. Well, that's not what we're going to do with it. We're going to write some things that we're afraid of. So let's think. What are we afraid of? How about we're afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark? The dark can be spooky. What about, let's see, what's something else? Hmm. How about a bad storm? Oh, I don't like bad storms. I don't like thunder and lightning and it raining hard. So let's write storms. So, so far we got dark, we're afraid of the dark, and we're afraid of storms. So I need two more things. Let's see, hmm, what about bugs like spiders? I don't like spiders, ooh, I don't like spiders at all. All right, so now we got three. We got, we're afraid of the dark, we're afraid of storms, and we're afraid of bad bugs like spiders. So we need one more, hmm, let me think, hmm. I know, what about this virus that's going around that, I don't even know how to say it, Kokomoko virus or uh, hmm, hmm, Corona something. Anyway, I'm afraid of it. Okay, so let's write virus. We don't understand this virus. All I know is that this virus is keeping us from going to church and to school. So I don't like this virus. So now we're gonna fold it back up like a fan. All right, so what happens when we're afraid? We get fearful of things. Now, because this candle represents me and you, watch this. You see how that flame begins to flicker and move around? It becomes shaky and wobbly. Well, that's what fear does to our, our heart and our spirit. We become shaky and afraid and our spirit becomes wobbly and we don't know what to do. We're all nervous. And we're, we're like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm just scared to death. What am I going to do? Well, let me show you. This says prayer. This is a plastic bag that says prayer. And I did a plastic bag because you can't see your prayers. But God does. And he hears everything that we say. He knows when we're afraid. But look, when our spirits are wobbly and scary and shaky because we're afraid of something going on, when we begin to pray, look at that. It stops shaking. When we turn it over to Jesus, everything's fine. All because of prayer. How easy is that? I wish I had known that a few days ago. I was scared to death. If I had only prayed and asked Jesus to help me, Jesus gives us this peace. The Bible says he gives us this peace that passes all understanding. And what that means is when I don't understand something, 
that I'm afraid of and you don't understand something that you're afraid of, he gives us peace. And no longer does our, our little flame flicker and we're not shaky and wobbly anymore like we were when we were afraid because Jesus answers our prayers and he protects us. So, we are going to learn a memory verse. Everybody say, memory verse. First of all, we'll out this candle so we call the church spot. You know, we have fire in the church. We won't ever come back. <laughs> all right, our memory verse is, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. How easy is that? Psalms 56, 3. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Psalms 56, 3. But now we're going to go a step further. I'm going to teach it to you in sign language. How about that? All right. You're going to have your left pointy finger right here and your right pointy finger right here. Now, your right hand is always your dominant hand. This is the hand you use the most for sign language. All right. So we're going to do the word whenever. Watch this. When. See what I did? I just did a circle. When. Ever, let's do it again. Whenever I am afraid, afraid is this, and you're shaking, you're nervous, your your spirit's wobbly because you're nervous. Then the scripture says, "I will trust in you." How cool is that? All right, I'm going to do it again, and then we'll say where it's found. All right, when ever. I am afraid and shake them hard because you're afraid, you're nervous, your spirit's wobbly and shaky. I will trust. Now what I love, I love the word trust. Watch. Trust. It's like you're confident. Because you're trusting in God, we become strong and courageous. So I trust, and the word in, you're just sticking it down in your, your other hand, sticking one hand down into the other. I will trust in you and we trust in Jesus. Now, this is where it's found. There's no sign for the word Psalms, so we're going to spell it. I'm going to show you how to spell it. Ready? P S A L M. Let's do that again. P S A L M. Psalms 56 is five, and then your six is your little finger. So 56, three. 56, three. Let's do Psalms one more time. P, S, A, L, M. Psalms 56, three. All right, let's do the whole verse one more time in sign language. Now remember, you're opposite me. If I'm doing this, then you're doing it that way because you're facing me, okay? So, whenever I am afraid, now really shake it hard, I will trust, remember you're confident, I will trust, you can even say it like that, I will trust in you. Psalms 56, 3. You did so good. I know you did. And remember that. You need to quote this to yourself when you're afraid. Remember our flame didn't shake when we prayed. Prayer isn't seen, but it's heard by Jesus. All right. I'll see you next time. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah. Okay. Now we're going to do the memory verse. Now we've been working on this one a long time. Remember Psalms 27, 1 through 4. We just added 4, but we're going to go over it. Y'all are doing such a good job on this. But right now I want you to say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Now remember, I want you to go, whom? Okay, so let's start over. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Okay, we're going to go to number three. Ready? Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. 
Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. All right, this is our new one. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Psalms 27, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, let's say it together again. This time I want you to clear your throat, let your, let your parents hear you saying it. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Psalms 27, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, good job. Next week, we're going to go over number four, and we're really going to be learning it, okay? I love you. I'll see you next week on Virtual TV. Bye-bye. Mwah.